Welcome to Silver Report Uncut. So we have this GDP release. What it revealed is something very, very concerning. Now we brought up price to earnings in a recent video, and what it shows is that the current stock market is so overpriced. Now many people out there, they've been getting kind of excited throughout this earnings season. The problem is they've already revised expectations so low that many companies end up beating expectations. That's because they were already lowered. But this idea that we're just going to have endless growth in the economy and having this continuous flow of strong corporate earnings we need to really dig into some of the truth on this data because according to the GDP data released today, quarter two corporate earnings, they had their largest annual decline in several years. And what it shows is that there has actually been no growth in operating profits for the past five years for U.S. corporations. Corporations within the United States are not growing, but there's a little bit of a problem with that because the stock prices, they are. Of course, the quarter two GDP, it came out better than most analysts' expectations. It grew at a 2.1% annualized rate. Spending mounted what looked like a comeback, but then the gain in GDP, it didn't end up coming down to the bottom line for these corporations. According to the preliminary quarter two GDP results, implied operating profits for the period, it totaled only $1.9 trillion. That's down 5% from quarter one. And this represents the third consecutive quarterly decline. It's off over 7% just from last year. This is one of the largest declines recorded going back several years. But as bad as the quarter two numbers happen to be on the surface, what's even more troubling is the fact that we had these huge downward revisions coming in from the last two years. I wonder what the real GDP is for the current cycle. According to the annual GDP revisions, operating profits for 2017 among American corporations were lowered by a whopping $93 billion. That's 4.4% lower than they actually reported. Profits for 2018, they were reduced by even more, $188 billion, a whopping 8.3% lower than what was actually reported and also celebrated. So these revised numbers of corporate profits, they show that the operating profits, they peaked back in 2014 and they have been moving either sideways or down. And a flat trend for five years in operating profits, this should not be ignored. During this time period, the S&P 500 share prices, they've increased over 50%. And yet at the same time, operating profits have not increased at all. Now, if you're unsure of what that term means, that would be profits that are from current production. This, of course, would be the most accurate form of corporate earnings because it would use the same accounting framework. And that's most likely why they don't use this number. And what this is suggesting that the analysts or economists out there that are suggesting that the, the current stock market is inexpensive relative to profits, like usual, the data paints an entirely different picture, and it shows that the market multiple for the price to earnings is much higher than what is being reported by analysts. Not to mention that all of these major banks are coming down, and they expect major downward revisions coming in for the earnings expectations. So even the massaged numbers show a really troubling pattern. Now, I wanted to briefly talk about this T-Mobile and Sprint merger. Now, of course, it's been approved. It has been a major hurdle for these two companies. Now, what they've done in order to complete the merger, they've agreed to actually create a new wireless carrier. They're going to sell a lot of their assets to a company that they've labeled DISH. It's going to be required because they anticipate to build a 5G network for cell phone customers as a part of this deal. Part of the problem is the concerns that three carriers would now control 95% of the market and it's so much that they're required to actually create a fourth carrier. Now, of course, it will most likely struggle to be able to catch up with these much larger rivals now that they control so much of the market. Now, even though currently Sprint is on the edge of bankruptcy, and most likely this merger would reverse all of that, this merger is still expected to create the largest cell phone carrier in the United States. It would have around 120 million customers under one name. 
Now, we all know the Federal Reserve is widely expected to initiate their interest rate cuts in the upcoming FOMC meeting. Now, the problem is the longer that we have this drag on in capital markets, the bigger the cumulative economic price we will have to pay. Now, keep in mind, this is the longest duration for any business cycle within U.S. history. The problem is it's also the lowest growth of any of these longer business cycles we've been through. Another big problem we face is this is going to be the fourth Federal Reserve stimulus action taken in this current expansion. And why is it we've not been able to generate any growth? We've had lackluster GDP growth for years. The problem is this is likely to continue on for decades. I don't know how we anticipate making the same actions as the BOJ and ending up with different results. There's a problem with that. And there's nothing new about the Federal Reserve coming in and beginning stimulus measures well into a business cycle expansion. They also entered into the same in 1927 as well as 1998. We see how well those worked out. But this time around, we have seen stimulus action taken by the Federal Reserve in 2010 to 2011, 2012, 2013, 2016, 2017, 2019, all in one single cycle. It's actually unprecedented. Historically, there's either been a jump in service inflation, concerns about speculation that have risen up to be able to stop the Federal Reserve from stimulating more than once or twice in a current episode. Now, I wanted to bring out one of the more significant facts that was brought up by the most recent GDP release because we saw that 3% GDP growth for 2018. Everybody was getting excited. It was the first time we came out and finally made it above 3% in a decade. We've not really had any growth generated by this current expansion. The problem is those annual revisions have brought that number dramatically lower. The updated government figures show that gross domestic product expanded at 2.5% last year and growth in the final three months of 2018 it now is come out at an annualized rate of 1.1 percent that's half of the previous estimates it's also the slowest pace of growth going back three years we saw during this time period consumer spending it went through a dramatic transformation and it's important to understand why these policies are so bad. Someone brought up the fact that the quantitative easing is not meant for the little man. We see that we have had a 2.3% average annual economic growth during this current decade-long expansion labeled as the longest expansion in U.S. history. Now, the previous expansion from 2001 to 2007, which was of much shorter duration, it came in at 2.9% growth. And the 10-year expansion that ended Ended around 2001 that was around 3.6 percent GDP growth so they keep talking about how well things have been going in fact I think some of the words they've used is that never seen the US economy running at levels as strong everyone had their eyes looking forward anticipating that we would see a slowdown in growth little did people realize the growth that was reported last year everybody was so happy about it it was celebrated a large percentage of that actually never occurred. It's sad because they work so hard to get us to believe. They work so hard to make us feel. But it's no surprise whenever you see this rise in delinquencies, this rise in people not paying their bills, and more than that, the rise of Americans working two and three jobs just to be able to keep the roof over their head. We see how much is being consumed simply on rent costs, on housing. We have not seen a single bit of this stimulus measures translate into the wages of the common man, translate into the pockets of the common man, and you will not see any of the upcoming stimulus measures benefit you whatsoever. Any kind of wage increases have been easily canceled out by inflation, which is underreported, by the way. And we think, ah, don't worry, they got it all under control. Don't worry, the Federal Reserve will never let markets go down again. They're going to just keep stimulating forever. They can just keep this going forever. The problem is... When we look at these corporations, their profits are not increasing. These companies are not expanding. We are literally standing still, treading water, barely. GDP growth is not materializing. Do you see? We are not advancing. So I suppose some official definitions of a recession would be negative growth for two or more consecutive quarters. So what does that mean when we've had no actual 
growth out of the corporations going back five years where we've had almost no GDP growth and the enormous sums of debt that all of this has taken just to generate zero growth is immense. It's insane. If you see the deficits we are running on a regular basis, where do you think this all ends? Where is this story? Stop. Don't you understand? None of this is sustainable. The simple fact is our bill is quite large and it's coming due. All right, thank you guys for stopping by and joining us here at the Silver Report Uncut. If you like the content, be sure to subscribe. As always, stay safe.